Hello everyone and welcome back to Near Replicant. My name is Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman, and today well, I think there's a forest of myth that we need to go to. I did say last time that we would be doing some side quests, but I've realized that I don't not, I, I don't necessarily know when in the story we get to the point where we're not going to be able to access our side quests anymore, but Oh, I wish I could beat the Kine lady Titanium told me about. I bet she's really nice and always says nice things. I wonder if that's what my mom was like. Mmm. I hate to break it to you, Yona, but uh, not exactly the case. But you'll see we did switch Kine back to her normal outfit. I'll try out the 2B outfit for her sometime at a later date. But for now, put her back in her normal outfit. Uh, what was I saying? Side quests. So we know the name of the side quest, or the name of the quest that we need to avoid doing until we've done all of the side quests that we want to do. So, um, I know it's obviously, as has been stated a few times now, not as important to do all of the side quests as it is in, um, Automata, but I still would like to do most of them. So, we will be trying to do so, and I will be paying attention to when we have that particular quest coming up, but until that point, I want to just make some story progress, man. And uh, also, as I'm recording this, I have not uploaded or you guys have not seen the previous episode where I asked for a comprehensive list of like where we're at with side quests and what we should be doing and all that type of stuff. So once we get that, it'll be easier to do some cleanup with side quests as well. But for now, I think we're in a good enough spot that we can just make some sort uh, forward progress in the story. So we're going to do just that. Now, last time we were here, things were a little odd and nobody would talk to us, but it seems now this elderly fellow is willing to converse. Beware. Mm-hmm. Beware the words. The words? What do you mean? Contagious words. The Black Scrawl, perhaps. Those who Dream. Those who dream? Hold a moment. There is a strange new sensation in my mind. It's a very large text box. Weiss, Weiss's voice rose in a quizzical way. It is not quizzical. What? What's going on? The villager's body shuddered as he slowly opened his eyes. Perhaps we should start by asking this man. Uh, who are you? What is happening here? We heard something happened to this village, so we came to see if we could help. The mayor stared at Titanium and Vice. If you can speak to me, I must have caught you in my dream. Ah, uh, is that why things are being narrated? In your dream? Interesting. The mayor explained. In the past weeks, a mysterious disease called the Death Dream had spread across the forest of myth. Those who caught it were cursed to fall asleep and live forever within the world of their own dreams. The village mayor had determined that the Death Dream was spread from person to person by spoken words, but before he could learn more, the disease took him as well. <laughs> this is getting really trippy, man. <laughs> Vice stared at the mayor, his mouth twi twitching slightly. Now see here, he said. Are you saying that we have been absorbed into your dream? Well, yes, said the mayor. I think you have. In other words, said Titanium. You've caught the death dream? Before the mayor could confirm Titanium's suspicion, Vice exploded with rage. Ridiculous. Preposterous. Completely unfathomable on every conceivable level. I don't even recall falling asleep. Ah, but we were asleep before, were we not? And we had a very strange dream then. That's just how the death dream works. Though polite, the mayor was clearly trying to brush aside the book's remarks. My remarks are not to be brushed aside, fool. I love that we can hear the narration in our heads, apparently. The mayor twisted his mouth into an embarrassed grimace, then quickly changed the subject to who Titanium had seen and what they had discussed 
since coming to the village. Uh, well, there wasn't a whole lot, because it was you and you. Something there must have caused you to enter my dream. Said a the mayor. A certain conversation. A specific word. Something. Well, you said to beware the words. Titanium and Vice racked their brains, but could find no easy solutions. There were simply too many words to consider. Too much random chatter. Too many meaningless conversations. Are you sure? Are you 100% certain about that? Because I don't think that's the case. Grimoire Vice does not engage in meaningless conversations. The mere suggestion that Vice chose his words carelessly seemed to sting his pride. It does not seem to sting my pride, you bloated gas bag of a narrator. <laughs> this is awesome, dude. It has demolished it utterly. Irritated, Vice looked skyward as if searching for answers in the heavens. I was doing no such thing. Just leave me alone already. The anger created by his harsh words bled over to Titanium like a contagion. I... I guess this isn't being voice acted anymore. Wait! said Titanium suddenly. Did someone just say contagion? Yes, I believe so. What of it? Well, that villager told us to watch out for contagious words, right? The mayor leaned forward with renewed interest, pushing a startled vice aside in the process. He must have said something, right? Asked the mayor. Some specific combination of words. What was it? It... They don't remember the mayor saying this to us? Because, like, this is what the mayor told us, isn't it? I swear it is. It was about dreaming, or something that dreams, or... Oh, what the hell was it? A sheep! cried Vice suddenly, blurting out the first thing that popped into his head. Or this head, apparently. The others stared at him for a moment before slowly shaking their heads. After a few more minutes of thought, Titanium's face suddenly lit up. I remember, he said. Those who dream. That's what he said, I'm sure of it. At this, the mayor produced a thick sheaf of papers from his pocket. He flipped through them a few times before finally nodding his approval at Titanium. That sounds right, he said, as a stray sheet of paper fluttered to the ground. My notes also mention something about that. I bet it was the last thing you heard before you fell asleep. The mayor shook his head, his worn pencil stub tracing lines across a lone piece of paper. For the last month, I've done nothing but study the disease we call the death dream, he said. I mean, I'm the mayor, right? It's my job to protect people from whatever comes along. But I never expected a couple of outsiders to start entering people's dreams. The mayor paused, a grimace crossing his face. I should probably be taking notes or something. Vice immediately fired back. I applaud the force of will it takes to research a disease in your dreams, he said. But perhaps we should bend your efforts to escaping this place, instead of trying to understand it. The mayor's hand tightened around his pencil, snapping off the tip. This is just the game now. <laughs> like, it's just a visual novel. It's not even a visual novel. It's just a novel. I've tried to escape. From the very first moment I realized I was locked inside my own dream, I've been looking for a way out. But I don't think it exists. I mean, this is my dream, right? If there was an exit, I'd know about it. Unless this is an Inception-type scenario, and he's actually in somebody else's dream, and we're in his dream inside that person's dream, and... Ah! <laughs> oh, crap. I didn't mean to do that. He paused for a moment. His eyes did something, gazed off into the distance, I think. My village was beautiful, he said to no one in particular. And it was filled with the most wonderful people you could ever hope to meet. But once this disease took hold, things changed. It's like someone took a sponge and soaked all the color out of our lives. I just want us to be whole again. I want us to be free. And I won't stop trying until it happens. Titanium nodded in agreement. Huh? Wait a second, I didn't nod. Look, if we can be of any help, said Titanium. Just ask. Now, hold on, I did not just say that. 
Silence! cried Vice. The grimoire looked from Titanium to the mayor and back again, his face filling with confidence. <laughs> grimoire Vice's face is always confident. Thank you very much. Now, see here, Mayor. You told us that nothing can exist in this dream without you knowing of it. But yet you seemed surprised to see us when we first arrived, yes? The mayor slowly raised his head, realization dawning on his face. Oh my god, he said. You're right. You're right. I had no idea you were coming. The human imagination is a limitless engine, said Vice, and dreams are the fuel. If you can imagine an exit, then it must be so. With your permission, we shall search it out. Thank you, said the mayor. I don't know how I can repay you. Payment is not required. We are as eager as you to be done with this place. This is really taxing what limited voice acting ability I have. The mayor suddenly felt as if he could breathe again. He'd almost forgotten what it was like. Good luck, you two, he called at the departing forms of Titanium and Vice. We're all counting on you. As Titanium slowly faded into the misty forest, the mayor was struck by a sense of deja vu. I saw this man once before, he thought. But where? Titanium's mood darkened as he trudged through the forest. Hours earlier, when the beauty of the place was still a new thing, he'd been confident they could get in, find the exit, and be home in time for dinner. But the deeper they went, the more the forest closed in on him, or around him even. The mist made it difficult to see more than a foot in any direction, and moss-covered rocks seemed determined to twist his ankle. More than once, he'd been forced to steady himself on the rough bark of a tree, and his hands now left small trails of blood on everything he touched. I am conspicuously taking large sips of water in between lines because my throat is getting very dry very quickly. Additionally, Vice was proving to be a spectacularly poor traveling companion. Unhindered by either terrain or physical effort, he spent most of his time urging Titanium to pick up the pace and grumbling about their slow progress. Finally, after Vice muttered something about legless turtles being more adept at navigating the environment, Titanium snapped. Okay, Vice, cram it for a second, would you? You don't have to walk! Titanium leaned against a tree and tried to stretch the knots from his back. How can this stupid forest be so big? He muttered to himself. The moment the words tumbled from his mouth, a cacophony of insects sprang to life. Every imaginable form of buzz, click, and hiss roared out at a volume that rattled his teeth. Titanium slapped his hands over his ears and screamed to be heard, Vice, what's going on? Titanium could see Vice's mouth moving, but he might as well have been shouting in a tornado. The insects screamed. The forest howled. And then, just as Titanium's ears seemed ready to tear from his head and go running for cover, the sound diminished. Hesitantly, he removed the hand from his left ear and listened to the creatures of the woods. Zree! 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 <laughs> oh my, are you serious? Shack! 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 I make great insect noises, guys. Oh my, I'm done here. <laughs> woo 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 ma! <laughs> oh my, chic chic chic. What the hell? <laughs> As the insect symphony dimmed another decibel, Titanium began to detect patterns in the voice or in the sound. Even this isn't random. He thought it's not just white noise. It's something else. The insects weren't just calling out. They were asking a question. One with it is lacking. Two with it is ideal. Three with it is dangerous. What is it? Wait, what? Ba oh, this is Vice. By my pages, is this a riddle? 
I guess so. I mean, it feels sort of forced, but maybe it's the key to getting out of this place. Then I leave it to you to answer. One with it is lacking. Two with it is ideal. Three with it is dangerous. What is it? The answer is a secret, right? Like, a secret held by one person isn't lacking, but a secret shared is perfect. But with more people... Inwardly furious that Vice left the task to him, Titanium sighed and gave the only answer that made sense. It's a secret. Uh... Right? The sound of the insects stopped as suddenly as it began. The forest undergrowth parted before Titanium like a rippling wave opening a new path. These forest arthropods are making a road for us, said Vice with glee. Pleased at passing the test, Titanium moved on with new intensity. The path offered his body relief from the undergrowth, but gave even greater cheer to his mind. As long as they were on a path, their journey had a purpose. I guess the forest has accepted us, huh? Said Titanium after a bit. This is all happening in a dream, remember? <laughs> Let's not get lost in this. Vice spun around to face his companion. Do not mistake the will of this forest for some happy pet you can suddenly befriend. We have no idea where this path leads. As Vice finished speaking, the pair turned a corner and found themselves facing a clear forest spring. Smiling, Titanium picked up a small rock and sent it skipping across the surface of the water. Good heavens, said Vice. His surprise was understandable. Each time the rock struck the surface of the water, a musical note rang out. This is just like, this is some Into the Looking Glass shit, right? Like, this is some Alice in Wonderland, right? We're in Wonderland right now. <laughs> That's what's happening here. We've entered the domain of the Fae. When the rock finally stopped moving and sank to the bottom of the spring, the ripples it left behind came together to form words. I enter through the window, but break no glass. When night falls, I vanish. What am I? Sunlight. That's easy. <laughs> Absurdly easy, barked Vice. Now answer it. Titanium grit his teeth and tried not to reach out and strangle his companion. <sighs> He's right, after all, this one is pretty easy. I enter through the window, but break no glass. When night falls, I vanish. What am I? A bird, a letter, or sunlight? Sunlight! A plume of water suddenly burst from the spring. Sunlight filtered through the trees and reflected off the plume, creating a shimmering rainbow that spanned the entire horizon. In all my years, said Vice softly, I have never seen such a sight. Perhaps I have misunderstood the intentions of this place. Hey, look! cried Titanium, awakening Vice from his daze. There's a house or something over there. Glancing in the direction of his friend's extended hand, Vice saw a small cottage nestled among the trees. I like that from Vice's perspective, we're his friend. That's a nice little touch. I like that. Isn't that... or That's weird, isn't it, Vice? I mean, who would build a house all the way out here? Titanium walked over and pounded on the door. After a minute of solid banging, the door cracked open, and a small man peered out. His body was cloaked from neck to toe in a large black cape, while his face was obscured by mist. Ah, uh, began Titanium. But before he could get any further, the cloaked man held a hand up and began speaking. I have four legs in the morning and two at noon, but end the night with three. What am I? Titanium tried to ask the cloaked man who he was and what he was doing there, but he simply repeated the question. If we wish to engage this man in conversation, said Vice, it seems we must answer his riddle. Also, this... I think this is battle music in the Forest Kingdom, isn't it? In, uh, in Automata? I think it might be. Hmm. 
Yeah, it definitely sounds like it. Uh, yeah, I suppose, said Titanium. Well, at least it's an easy one. I have four legs in the morning and two at noon, but end the night with three. What am I? Uh, I believe it would be a man. A man. The mist dissolved from the cloaked figure as he spoke a single word. Correct. With that, the man flung his garment aside, revealing his true identity. You're, you're the mayor, cried Titanium. The small man slowly shook his head. I am not the mayor you know. Now, listen to my words. Long ago, I saw a version of you that was not yourself. Uh, sorry? What's that mean? It will make sense in time. At present, I simply congratulate you on cracking the seal of the death dream. Now you must go to the person at the forest entrance. With that, the man turned on his heel and slammed the door behind him. As Titanium watched, mist seeped up from the ground and enveloped the cottage, erasing it from existence. When Titanium and Vice returned to the forest entrance, they found the mayor leaning against a tree. So is he talking about the past version of us that, like, we saw in our dream, and that presumably would be the version of Nier from the prologue? Because that, that seems to be something that we're setting up here, like, that Nier and our Nier now are two different people, is the implication I'm getting here. As soon as he caught sight of the duo, he sprang to his feet and scrambled over to them. Good gravy, he cried. You made it! You actually made it back! His left hand grasped Titanium's and pumped it so fiercely it threatened this lodge from the socket, while his right seized Vice by the cover and swung him through the air. Gah! By the heavens, stop shaking me, fool! We have not even told you if we were successful or not! The mayor smiled broadly and shook his head. I'm just happy you're alive. I didn't think I'd ever see you again. Titanium withdrew himself from the mayor's eager handshake with a slight smile. We broke the Death Dream seal, he said. At least, I think we did. The mayor's face beamed as Titanium filled him in on the details. When the tale was done, the three of them laid down on the forest ground and fell asleep. <laughs> this is all a very whimsical fairy tale that definitely is not something that any of these characters would do. Which is funny, because like, it's obvious enough as it is, but we had a bunch of little anecdotes from the characters as the narration was starting that's like, I didn't do that, or I wouldn't do that, or it's not accurate at all. <laughs> and yet, apparently, it's what's happening. Titanium cocked his head. Okay. Yeah, see, exactly. Hang on a second, this is crazy. Why would we just lay down and go to sleep? Cease your endless prattle and go to sleep, fool. Fighting against the rules of this place is futility itself. Titanium and the mayor obediently reclined atop the grassy earth. Have you forgotten, continued Vice, it is words that control the death dream. Words that allow us to move from place to place. No matter how unnatural they seem, the words are absolute. Therefore, if the words tell us to sleep, then sleep we shall. Yeah, but the words are contagious. I don't know that we want to listen to them. And once we do, the story will continue. Yeah, but we don't want the story to continue. We want out. <laughs> With that, the trio found their eyes growing heavy, their breath slowing. This is the first time, began the mayor. The first time I have felt tired since I was imprisoned here. His words were cut off by a loud, long yawn and he remembered nothing more. They might have slept for an hour or a year. When they awoke, things had a slightly more real quality to them. The mist felt thicker, the leaves greener. It was clear that they had awakened from their dream. And yet we're still being narrated, this doesn't feel right. Titanium shook the mayor's shoulder gently. Oh, yeah, we're coming back. Good news, he said. I think we made it. Oh, wow, said the mayor in an awed voice. 
We did it. I'm back. He blinked once and then again, as if not quite believing the sight before him. You two have no idea how much this means. The death dream was spreading through our village and I wanted to... Well, I thought I could figure out how to stop it, but I guess that wasn't the case. I must have caught the disease and become trapped in my own dream. That is what you explained to us, yes. The mayor started to stand, then collapsed back to the earth. He stared at his legs as if trying to remember how they worked then glanced at Titanium and shrugged. Without a word, the young man reached down and pulled the mayor to his feet. Real life may take some getting used to, said the mayor as a wry smile crossed his lips. But how did they send a letter to Popola, right? Like, that's a big question. Like, obviously the letter was messed up. Was it like the last desperate thing he did as he was falling into the dream? You shall relearn in short order, I am sure, said Vice. For now, you should return to your home and rest. No, said the mayor, swaying on an unsteady feet. No, I, I can't. Some of the villagers are still trapped in the death dream. I have to save them. The mayor slowly made his way to the divine tree in the center of the village, then bowed his head and prayed silently. This is a holy tree, he explained when the prayer was finished. It's the guardian of our village's history and memories. Superstition will only make our mission harder, muttered Vice. We should not put our faith in the gods. The mayor shook his head. Not the gods, the words. Legend says that our tree is home to a powerful magic known as a sealed verse. Titanium and Vice could not contain their surprise. It seemed a goal had been found in the most unexpected of places. I say, muttered Vice, this is by certainly a stroke of luck. As the three of them said their goodbyes, Titanium mentioned the strange man who had given them the third riddle and the mysterious words he had left them with. I once saw a version of you that was not yourself, muttered the mayor. What in the world does that mean? Lost in thought, he stared into space for a long moment. You know, he said softly, this is going to sound odd, but I had a feeling I'd seen you before, too. Titanium tried to keep a straight face and failed, but the mayor didn't seem to notice. Deja vu, right? Anyway, I figure it's just some kind of illusion created by the death dream. It probably doesn't mean anything. Titanium gave the mayor a nod and a smile, but inwardly his thoughts were racing. There's something wrong about the mayor and his words. And what exactly is going on here? That riddle would prove to be the most difficult one of all. Oh, thank you so much. It definitely still feels like we're in the dream. Now I can finally return to a normal life. This is one of the most bizarre diseases I have ever encountered. I know. That's why we have to help the other villagers, no matter what. Dark execution magic, okay. Oh, this is the one that we got in the, the prologue that was super strong. Summon magical spikes from the ground to impale enemies. Charge to increase the number of spikes. Hell yeah. For a sealed verse, that didn't take much effort. Yes. All a touch too easy, if you ask me. It's because you're still in the dream! Woo! It's almost as if someone was guiding us to this village. Exactly. Who sent us the letter? Don't overthink advice. What in the hell? Now I can finally return to a normal life. This is one of the most best I know. So weird, man. Alright, is there anyone else here that we can talk to? Antidotal weed. I think there was someone else sitting here before. There were definitely other people here. Oh yeah, there's one. Oh, a side quest even. Hello. This person must be dreaming too. It would appear that way, yes. I am not entering their dream right now. Uh, I will definitely do this thing, but like, 
I need to give my voice a second, because if there's going to be a whole pile of voice acting that I need to do like that again, then I need a slight break. <laughs> so, here's what we're going to do. We'll definitely help these villagers. That is the next thing on the list, but uh, I'm going to go save first, and when we come back, we'll go dive into their dreams. So, sound good? I hope so, because it's what's happening, and no one but me has a say in it. Ha 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 ha. All right. Well, guys, this has been a very interesting one. I don't know what to make of anything that just happened, but regardless, thank you all so much for watching. I do very much appreciate it. If you know someone that you think would enjoy this series or any of my other series, if you could shoot them a link, that'd just be swell. Until the next time, though, I hope you all have a good night. Stay safe and healthy out there. And remember, be good to each other. Bye now.